Hello everyone and welcome to the official D Heart House. <laughs> More about that in a moment. Uh, but welcome to the D Heart House podcast. My name is Alicia. I am the host of this crafty video podcast on YouTube and this is episode 85. <laughs> So welcome. <gasps> this is the official D Hard House because we just bought this house. All right. So it has been, I think, three months since I've last recorded a typical episode for you all. And the reason for that hiatus has been uh, quite a few things, one of them being the COVID-19 pandemic and how it has affected my ability to do things in my free time. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that we have been in the process of looking for a home to buy and finally completed that process. And that's very time consuming, especially on my free time, <laughs> which is when I do my crafting. So now that things have calmed down a bit, we're falling into a routine, um, planning out short-term projects and long-term projects for our new home, um, I now have some time to sit down and socialize with you all again, which I have been severely missing. So, <laughs> uh, I hope you all have been well and that uh, you've been on a creative journey of your own in the time that I have been gone. So this episode is going to be about uh, getting back up to speed on things. Uh, while uh, my free time has been definitely uh, reduced uh, recently, uh, there has still have been time for crafting. So I still have finished some things that I want to share with you, uh, have works in progress, and of course, plans for the future. So let's dive into some of the things that I have been able to round up. Uh, I am still in the process of unpacking, as you can imagine, and uh, I have a, a stack of boxes here I have some items sitting on, but I have not been able to find everything that I'm looking for. So I will show you what I have gathered up and there will be time for those things to come up again that I can't find. So <laughs> let's get started with things I've finished, I think, since the last time I've seen you. Um, I also have a hard time remembering what it is we talked about last time. Um, I just don't know. Uh, I'm drinking some tea. This is, uh, the brand is Traditional Medicinals. And this is Throat Coat Tea. Um, I did wake up with a little bit of a dry, sore throat this morning, and I've just been drinking some Throat Coat Tea. It tastes awesome. I just, I love the flavor. Um, and it's, it's really nice for, you know, soothing your throat. So that, that's what I have to, to drink today. Um, but yeah, let me catch you up on things that I finished. I did post, um, some color study videos where I was spinning, uh, raw Shetland wool, undyed, uh, or I was prepping the fiber, then I, I dyed the fiber, and I um, did a blending process to blend out the rainbow in my color study, and then um, I did knit a couple of those skeins up. So I thought I'd just share those with you here very quickly. Um, the first skein that I knit up was the fractal, um, excuse me, is it a fractal? Is it a three-ply? I just, okay, so, right, so 
So all of the projects that I'm going to be talking about today do have uh, project pages on Ravelry and my Ravelry name is Aliddy Knits too and you can absolutely follow me, friend me, whatever the right word is on Ravelry uh, and you can also even just go in and peruse the projects that I have listed there. So uh, you can find links to uh, any patterns that I've used, um, links to yarn that I've used, etc. All there in my project pages on Ravelry. So the first project I want to share with you was from my color study of when I was spinning, um, going through, you know, start to finish with processing wool, which included dyeing the, the fiber and then blending it in the fiber, fiber prep process to make different colors uh, and then spinning with the different colored fiber. Super fun. So one of these skeins I spun up was a fractal ply and I, that is a two ply, two ply, yes, two ply seems like so long ago now. So I decided to knit a just very basic boomerang shawl out of the fractal ply. Um, I just wanted a, a simple pattern that would really showcase the yarn itself as opposed to knit stitches um, and, and some kind of pattern. So um, I'm going to do my best to show you the color because uh, I, I now have blue walls, if you haven't noticed. I've gone from uh, wood, wood paneling to white walls and now a blue wall. Um, and uh, the lighting here is phenomenal with natural light coming in the window on this side. Um, however, it may be a little bit too much for me. So. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to showcase colors as well as I can. Um, but yeah, so I did start over here with the red in the tip, and then it progresses out across the, the rainbow, and you can really see um, how it makes it look, you know, more red over here. But, oh, it is so fun. The, the fractal applying was super fun and I just like how colorful this shawl is. It's not huge <laughs> um, but uh, but it works and I have lots of um, rainbow items now this being one of them um, that I can wear on you know celebratory days like like Pride Day and whatnot so uh, yeah so this is my fractal ply and so I did the the stockinette pattern of a boomerang shawl so it is a uh, stockinette stitch and you can see the spin was actually pretty even pretty even considering I'm uh, I would still consider myself um, maybe I would consider myself a little bit on the intermediate side now but still very much a beginner um, and I think that's uh that's that's pretty good for uh, not having too much practice. Yay! So uh, that is one thing that I did I did work on and has brought me a lot of joy. And then the second uh, skein from my color study uh, was um, is this a two ply? Is this a three ply? Uh, oh, this is a three ply because I spun it chain ply. Chain ply so I could maintain the stripes. So the yarn just goes through the rainbow. So I spun it um, starting with this purpley red color all the way through as one skein, as one bobbin. <laughs> and then I plied it back on itself, chain ply style, so that I could maintain the color sequence. Uh, and so out of this, I knit a cowl. So it's just a round, around and around and around. Um, and I did do uh, garter, a couple rows, rounds of garter on the edge just to keep it from 
doing the rolling thing that stockinette stitch does on the end. Uh, and then I wanted, I wanted, you know, to showcase the yarn. So I just did stockinette stitch, no patterning. I did consider putting in, um, like eyelets or something, but I just, I really wanted it to just super showcase the yarn. Uh, and I think it does a nice job of that. This cowl is on the small side. I did, at first when I cast this on, I thought it was a little too big. I think I had gotten into the orange color. And even at that point, it's not really enough to gauge the size. So it is a bit, um, <laughs> It is a bit tight to get it on, but I don't have cowls like this and they are actually kind of nice when sometimes I do just, it's cold and I need something that's going to be close um, without a lot of loose fabric that will basically stay in place and keep me warm. Um, not that that happens all that often on a normal day, but let's say I'm, you know, hiking in the mountains and we're going up where it's snowing and I want to be super warm, then this is going to do that for me. So it is, uh, it is small, but uh, I think it will serve a purpose. And again, the bright, beautiful, bright colors here. So uh, but yeah, I can do this, and then it, um, if it can stay up, then it can be a face covering in the winter time. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah, it won't filter any, you know, particles. You know what I'm talking about. It won't filter out that virus <laughs> out of the air, uh, but it will, um, you know, it could potentially be a face covering that I can wear out on the hiking trail and just keep my breath from others, right? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so those are the two skeins that I've knit up from my color study. The third skein uh, I just didn't get to. Um, it got packed and I just didn't get to it. So I, I did knit up these two. Uh, and the third one is still yet to be found. So <laughs> it will get knit up at some point. Um, but yeah, the third skein, I, I spun um, one half of the rainbow here, the other half there, and then plied them with the intention that the opposite side of the color wheel would get plied with the other, the other side. So um, we'll see how that knits up as well. So I have finished some socks and I have no idea if I've shown these socks to you before. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just go with it. Um, the, the socks, these socks were packed on the blockers, um, which makes me think I was getting ready to do an episode. Um, cause it's usually when I put them on the blockers. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I had them on the blockers, uh, stacked up. And uh, that usually means I'm setting them aside for an episode. And so they got packed this way. So I think I need to share them with you. Uh, but they may, re they may be repeats. We'll, f we'll see. Uh, so these are uh, my, uh, one of my patterns, uh, Stud Master Socks. And this is knit out of mustache yarns in the Boba Fett colorway. And uh, so these socks are for my husband, and I just love it. I just love it. I did, uh, excuse me, heel flap and gusset. And I didn't do any kind of contrasting color. I just kept going with the self-striping yarn, which it just, it fits in really nicely. Uh, this is a, you know... Uh, must match skein 
what does she call them? Perfect, something like that. <laughs> this skein is is wound up in two separate halves, uh, where uh, the halves match, so you'll get two matching socks. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at that. They, the stripes. I mean, just look at that. They, uh, if I line these up, it. I mean, they match. It's really quite phenomenal uh, work that they do at Mustache Yarns. So uh, credit where credit is due because it's it's beautiful, uh, beautiful yarn, and. Uh, and I love the pattern. So it's a, a D Hard House pattern. Of course, I love it. I made it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's mostly a ribbing sock. And uh, that's kind of been my theme this year with socks is including a bunch of uh, ribbing components because I find that those socks fit the best uh, over a long period of time wearing the socks. I got some feedback from my husband on what seems to be working, what doesn't, you know, a year after, um, after a year's worth of wear and we decided, uh, ribbing, including ribbing is, is really good. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that sock. And I also have sitting here, I feel like I finished these before the Boba Fett socks, but these are just some plain stockinette stitch, um, socks. This is out of Patton's Croy yarn um for for both of it this is the uh cascade colors and i really like that because now um you living in in washington um there are the cascade mountains the cascade mountain range so uh but it also makes me think of water so i i don't know the intention behind the colorway but i like the name uh and then i have gray marl Pants Croy Gray Marl for the contrasting the, the cuff, the heel, and the toe. And on this one, I have a short row heel. Uh, I believe these are also for my husband. Uh, I feel like he needs more taller socks. <laughs> um, so uh, I really like knitting shorter socks because they take less time. Uh, but the, the longer socks are also really nice to have. So those are finished. Um, what else do we have? And so that's what I've finished that I can find. <laughs> There's still more to find in the boxes um, that I that I have out to show you, so I can take I can take these socks off the blockers now and put them in my husband's sock drawer, uh, which he will very much appreciate. Um, but there are other things that I, you know, are are works in progress that I had started before, and and one of those is uh, a blanket, and I I don't know. I don't know why I really enjoy making blankets as much as I do. Maybe it's the size. You get to really just, you know, um, have a very large canvas to work with. So uh, I, I have made progress on my, what is this called? This blanket pattern. Quilt. It's basically a, a, a crochet quilt following this uh, quilting pattern. Oh my gosh, what did I call this? I'll put the name up here on what um, <laughs> what this project is called. <laughs> but I did finish one of the big squares. And maybe I showed this to you. <laughs> it's, it's quite large. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite large. <laughs> uh, I am using, uh, worsted weight yarn and the pattern I believe is written for DK or sport weight. So it, it, it is going to be larger than, uh, than the pattern. This is crochet. Um, I'm horrible at gauge with crochet. It's just, 
I don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> so there are some of these ends hanging off here uh, because what you do is you, so you knit a square that's got these two colors on it, right? And you leave both ends, cut them long, because that's what you use to sew them to the nearby squares. So, uh, so all the middle ends, they're already taken care of because you use it to sew the squares together and then, you know, weave in the rest of the end and, and snip it. Uh, and it's very, it's very clean like that. Very nice. Um, but I do have them hanging off the, the sides here still because I'll need to attach this big square to the next big square in the same fashion. Uh, but yeah, so one of these big blocks is finished. It's not very good folding. And the next one has had some progress. Again, this got packed pretty early in the packing process, so you get to see my reaction for the first time since unboxing. Really exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we've got some got some progress happening here. Yep. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I, I guess I was, like, really starved for color with the rainbow projects and this, this you know, very colorful blanket pattern. I guess I was just really needing a pick-me-up. So, yeah, that project is still still in the works uh it, it made the move and has come out of a box so um, i'm sure it'll get worked on at some point <laughs> um what i did keep out to work on while packing and moving uh, was a pair of socks and this is a pair of socks for myself um, it's still in progress i'm almost finished but um <laughs> all i have to do is kitchener stitch the toe and then this pair will be finished so it's a pair of shorty socks um, like I said <laughs> I do like knitting short socks because they're so fast but uh, let me get let me get one of these blockers that's what they're for oh yeah there we go. Okay. <laughs> so they're uh, very bright. This is Lion Brand Manny Petty uh, that I picked up from Joann's. This colorway is Yoga. Yoga. So it's, uh, I feel like the lighting is, is going a little wonky right now, but uh, we've got this bright yellow bright blue, bright pink, um, and it's striping through them, through them all. And then I just, out of the same ball of yarn, I just went ahead and started the next sock, which then goes from yellow to gray, and then back to the blues and pinks. So it goes like this. <laughs> so yellow, blue, pink, blue, yellow, gray, and then yellow, blue, pink. Yeah. So these will be definitely not matchy, matchy socks, but coordinating, right? Uh, so yes, all I have to do is kitchener stitch the toe. That's all I have to do. I finished my decreases while watching TV with family after a day of unpacking boxes and moving furniture. <laughs> and I think I knit four rounds to get down to here and I was just exhausted and I stopped. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I have, I still have yarn left. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the project that has gotten me through the move itself. 
um, to still give me some some knitting to work on while everything else got packed so I just said this is this is all you have to work on is just one pair of socks because you should really be spending your your time you know moving so but yeah it's almost finished which is good because the move is finished so it's time to finish that uh, but yeah, I have a whole nother ball of it, so I'll probably um, just knit some more shorty socks out of it, and then I'll have four individual socks that I'll coordinate, and I can kind of be mixy-matchy about the pairs, and I think that'll be kind of fun. Um, yeah, so, oh, I am using, uh, I should say the needles, I'm using size zero, yep, size zero needles with uh, 64 stitches. I've too many times made the mistake of casting on 60 stitches on a size zero needle, and I do not have to do less stitches and a smaller needle. Just one of those things. <laughs> Just one of those things. Um, so yeah, 64 stitches on a US size zero. This is a Chowgu needle. They're my favorite. Um, favorite circular needles okay and then uh, another thing I do have handy is a project I cast on after moving here <laughs> so of course it's handy I know where it is um, I was unpacking boxes of yarn to put on the shelves over here and um, I was like you know what I really want to cast on um, not not socks but something that's still also somewhat mindless, just a bunch of knitting. Uh, so I cast on a, another baby blanket. Now, for those of you who might ask, I am not expecting. <laughs> I'm not expecting to be expecting any time. Um, so I, I really like to knit and crochet baby blankets because... It's still a blanket, but not as big as an adult size blanket. Um, so I just like the process of making a baby blanket. I don't have a purpose for them, <laughs> which is why I'm going to give them away, um, either as gifts or to charity. So uh, I like to do it for the process and ex um, experiencing and reading other patterns and things. Um, while still being somewhat small of a project. <laughs> uh, but I don't have a use for a baby blanket. <laughs> uh, so, this is, the yarn is also Lion Brand. This is one of the cupcake um, rolls. <laughs> it's, it's a self-striping, worsted weight, acrylic yarn. And it's rolled up in this ball, so when you look at it down from the top, you see all the color stripes um, in, in circles, which is very clever, fun packaging. Um, so I'm working this from the, from the outside of the ball, partially because I couldn't find the strand on the inside. Can you ever find that strand reliably in the center of a machine spun ball? <laughs> But yeah, so the first few shades are blues and greens, and then um, we'll have a bit of purple, and uh, it'll end with a bright green. So, let's see if I can show this to you. This blanket I've been taking pictures of, and I tell you what, the lighting, if the lighting, like it is now, it looks like there's only three colors blue, green, and then there's this very light, like, seafoam green at the top. There are more than three colors in here, people. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to put in a little um, video to show you the, the amazing effects of lighting when you are taking video and pictures. But yeah, so this is really fun. Um, the pattern is... Chevron Baby Blanket by Espastrico and uh, the two ladies at Espastrico 
uh, have a podcast, a video podcast on YouTube as well. Uh, and if you don't watch them, you should check them out. They're delightful ladies to watch and to learn from. So uh, this is a free, free pattern available on Ravelry. That is where I downloaded it. Uh, it may be available other places that I am unaware of, um, but it's free. It's very simple. Um, I've definitely crocheted chevron blankets before, so it was not uh, something strange to me. I've, I've worked with chevrons before, so... But it was just fun, and I thought it'd be nice to play around with the stripes. Uh, previously this year, I've knit brioche baby blankets out of this self-striping yarn, and so I wanted something a little different. Um, and yeah, this is really fun. So the pattern for this uh, is only, I think she says her dimensions were... Uh, 27 and a half inches wide and I'm thinking that I'll probably end up donating these baby blankets to Project Linus uh, because there are folks local to me where I can drop these off um, for Project Linus and for that charity for uh, baby blankets uh, they they have to meet certain size requirements and 27 and a half inches is too small so I did get a bit of progress and I measured and mine was um, because I went down a needle size just for preference um, mine was a little bit more narrow than 27 and a half inches so I thought well this really isn't gonna cut it is it so I ripped it out and I started over I cast on more stitches and so uh, it is much wider now it's in fact it's it's closer to 36 36 inches three feet wide which is uh, when it's all stretched out right which is what I need for project Linus so I think it's going to work out really well and I think I will use this whole skein uh, to make this blanket and just just the one skein um, I do have another one up on the shelf there that I'm eyeing, um, and I think I'll try yet a new baby blanket pattern for, for that next one. So if you have any baby blanket recommendations, knit or crochet, that you think a self-striping skein of yarn would do well with, and it's not striping repeats because it doesn't cycle back through you know red white blue red white blue red white blue it doesn't do that it's just color block stripes okay <laughs> anyway any recommendations you have i would love to hear about um i'm looking for something not brioche mostly if it's still chevron themed i would go with it just something a little different you know I want, it's my sample. It's my sampling project. <laughs> All right. So that pretty much gets us caught up on things that um, I'm pretty sure I didn't talk about with you <laughs> and that made it out of boxes. So uh, next time I will I will have found more things. Uh, to share with you that I had finished during my hiatus and um, definitely more things I'm working on so you will get a baby blanket update next time and I do have some new um, socks in the works I think I left them in the car of course <laughs> So, as far as plans go, I just, um, you know, we're settling back into our routines. Uh, we are both working from home as uh, college professors, and so um, it is nice that the, the internet seems to be working better here. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> But that's that's nice. I'm I'm set up on this side of the house, and my husband set up on the other side of the house, and so that way we can both be 
in a virtual meeting but not be um, within earshot of each other so we get that privacy um, as well as not um, being distracting to the other person which is a luxury so I totally appreciate that um, but yeah I, I am sad that my craft room has to be my home office because uh, normally on this desk I would have set up my sewing machine and, and that this would be my sewing desk but it is uh, it is not my sewing desk my sewing machine is in its um, plastic container that it came in in the closet um, and it will come out when it needs to but um, this is now a workspace so some changes uh, but totally needed I'm really fortunate that I do get to work from home and still get a paycheck which is a luxury that not everyone has been afforded and I I acknowledge that that's not it's not fair how those cards have fallen uh, definitely not not in an equitable way for sure the data is not gonna lie about that um, which is what I love about data anyway so I um, I did finish knitting a sock that I was designing and I wanted to show it to you today but I I don't know where it has gone so I will show it next time for sure I will find it um, and it's my my I'm calling them my deer camp socks um, I knit them for my father and it was um, around the time we were um, just the end of summer transitioning into fall and it made me think of deer hunting season and and, and those traditions of, of where I grew up in Michigan and uh, and at the time, my husband and I were watching a movie called Escanaba into Moonlight, uh, which is hilarious. Um, I went to school in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and it's, it's you know, about Uber culture and deer hunting and superstitions and whatnot. So it's uh, a movie I find hilarious because I get all the jokes uh, <laughs> that are being made, but... Um, anyway, so I, so I named the socks Deer Camp Socks. I will show them to you next time. Uh, but I will definitely be looking for at least one test knitter to help me out and test knit the pattern. Uh, so if you are interested in that, also let me know. You can send me a message through Ravelry or Instagram or comment down below here on YouTube. Um, I'm looking for more people to work with on test knitting patterns so that I can make sure I re release patterns that are error free, which is always really helpful when they are error free, right? Um, and I really need just a second set of eyes to help me out with that. I wish I could ask my husband, but I would have to teach him everything first. <laughs> I don't think he's interested <laughs> um, but anyway uh, yeah so I will showcase those next time so you can see what they look like and what you might be getting yourself into um, and if either way you're interested let me know that would be amazing uh, yeah so So that's it for the knitting content in today's episode. I'm going to chat a little bit about the house that we bought because that's huge, exciting news. And then that will probably be it for this episode. So um, if you're not sticking around, then I will see you next time. And if you are sticking around, you guys, this house. <laughs> ah, so... Uh, I am in Washington State in the greater Seattle area, and uh, I work in Bellevue. Excuse me, and I was commuting there back when we were commuting from the Tacoma area up to Bellevue, which is a long commute um, with traffic. And it was 
really just eating up a lot of my day. But you try finding a place to rent on one person's salary with a dog from two time zones away um, without being able to preview the property or anything. So uh, that was the place we could afford and secure from many miles away. And it was a great place to be um, for, for the time, right? But uh, so this place is definitely much closer to work. So the, when I do need to commute again, uh, it will not eat up three hours of my day, which is an amazing improvement. <laughs> um, so there's that. It's in a really good neighborhood. Um, it's three bedroom, one, we say two bath? Let's say two bath because both bathrooms have, they both have toilets, they both have sinks, and they both have showers. So it's two bath. Yeah. I wanted to say 1.5 and then I was like, but the second bathroom has a shower. So <laughs> it is a two bath. So three bedroom, two bath. We have a fireplace and a wood stove, which is interesting. But <laughs> I think what happened is the previous owners, I think they added on to the house. And when they added on the addition, they put in a wood stove in that area. So to heat that area. Anyway, so we have two places to burn wood. Huge yard with lots of garden space, like garden space that's already garden space because they've already like made the raised beds. So, yep, I have already planted garlic for the, for the fall planting of garlic. It's out there. Um, I'm very excited for spring to plant all the things. Um, it was very nice in the, in the previous place that we were renting. It was really nice that there was a small garden space where I could actually just practice gardening because I haven't really done it. I haven't done it in a long time. So it was nice to practice and learn and like really learn how to prune a tomato plant. I actually didn't know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. Um, there's a garage, so Michael can actually work on his wo woodworking projects, which is one of his hobbies. So usually, or usually before, only I had a space for my hobbies, and now he has one as well, which is wonderful. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the place is in shambles, so there will be no tour no tour. Okay. It's a mess. You guys understand. Um, I will give you updates on the craft room though. I'm not afraid of showing you a messy, messy craft room. So <laughs> I will show you the state of things as it comes together. It's, it's a process learning about the new space and where you want things. So, um, I do have a bunch of yarn already in the shelves, but I had a shelf full of books. I don't know where those, I need to find those books. Those are my pattern books and I need those. So those will go up. Um, I think the pegboard, I'm looking at the pegboard. I think that'll go back up again because that's where I put my leftover balls of yarn that are all wound up. And it's just nice to see them on display on the pegboard as opposed to in a box. It's in a box on the bottom shelf. That's where it's been the past year. And I can't remember what's in there. I'm like, I want to see it all spread out on the wall. So that'll go up somewhere. I have to decide where to put it. Um, but I also have to keep in mind that this is now where I'm teaching from. So as much as I want to yarnify my background, um, I may not want it to be full on yarn for my math students. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's a thing. So, yes, I have landed. So all is well with me. Uh, things are settling down in the official D-Hard house. This, are, this is our 
house. Um, I can repaint these walls if I want to. Just just knowing that I have that choice is... Um, it's nice. It's nice. So, um, yeah, that's all. That's all I have for you this week. Uh, is just some catch up on the state of things. So next time I see you, we will talk about the Deer Camp socks. I'll give you some progress on things uh, that I've been knitting, and I'll also show you some more spinning that I was working on. Uh, before the move. So until next time, I hope that you all stay safe, stay sane, and enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. See you next time.